on a scale of one to 10, with one being the least and 10 being excellent, rate yourself in your listening skills. Where do you fall on that scale? Good morning, everyone. This is Jim, and I'm excited to be with you on Wednesday Wisdom. Today, our lesson is about one of my absolute favorite topics. Yes, you can guess. It's about listening. Now, it's funny that this lesson showed up today as uh, one that we're going to share but really what was ironical was that our devotional this morning was about listening and how in the Bible, Job's friends, when he was suffering and in pain, came to him and sat for seven days and did not say a word. They just listened. They just listened. So today I want to share with you how becoming a person of influence can be enhanced and made better if we use and develop our listening skills. You know, there is value in listening. And here's what I know about listening is if you're talking, you are not listening. And what we often do is we talk, 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 and we don't hear what's being said. And hearing is one thing, but listening is another. And we're going to talk about some tips and techniques on things that we can do to help us become better listeners. So what is the value of being a good listener? Well, there are several things that happen when we are listening. One is that listening shows that we respect the other person, that we have a desire to know that person better. You know, we talk about connecting and communicating all the time. And you know that I value the, the process of connecting. It comes from John's book, John Maxwell's book, Everyone Communicates But Few Connect. We all talk, 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 talk. But do we connect? When we connect, it's because we are now listening and we are respecting what the other person is sharing with us. Because listening builds relationships. Gosh, you know, I love for people to listen to what I have to say. But you know what else? I love to hear what other people have to say. And I stop and listen when they're talking. And I tell you the greatest example for me or the greatest lesson for me about listening comes with my grandbabies. They always have something to share with me. And Papa has to really stop and focus and listen. But it's building a great relationship with my grandbabies because they know I care and that I am focused on them. Listening also helps us increase our knowledge. You know, everybody knows something that you don't know. But if you're not listening, you will never hear that lesson that they're trying to share or that message that they're trying to share or that feeling that they're trying to share. And listening, listening helps us build greater knowledge and understanding. Listening generates ideas. How many times have you been listening to someone and they said something and it created a thought in your mind that says, hey, I know I could do this or I could do that. Or maybe this is something I should try to move me forward on my journey. Listening can generate ideas. And this is a great one, one of, of, that I absolutely love because I know that when people listen to others, it builds a bond and creates a loyalty to each other. You know, it's just like a, a husband and wife, a relationship and marriage. When you both are listening and you're caring about each other, 
that loyalty that you build between each other in that relationship increases exponentially. So listening helps create loyalty. And then, and then the next one, and, and then we'll go on from here, says listening is a great way to help others and yourself. If you got to listen to understand, and when you're listening to understand, then you can help others because you know what their needs are. It also can help you because then you know how you can provide the help that that individual needs. Think about it from our businesses and how if we're listening to our clients, customers, and prospects, what a difference that can make if we really understand what their pain points are. What is it that they truly need? Do they need additional income? Do they need to improve their health? Do they just need to be in a community of people who care? And when we listen, we can understand and hear what those needs are. That's why listening is so very important. So how can you improve your listening skills? What steps do you need to take? Think about that for a moment. Now, you know, I know that we all struggle with the listening process. And there, there are some reasons behind that. There are some barriers or some things that get in our way that prevent us from listening. So let's talk about those for a minute. Let's talk about the barriers because you know what? I don't know anybody who has reached their greatest potential in listening. We can all do better. And if we know what steps we need to take, then we can improve our listening skills. You know, one of the techniques that, that Dale and I share all the time is the one, and this is not in the lesson, this is just what I like to share is we, you know, it makes you close your mouth. You got to listen more when you got your hand over and when you can't talk. Because as I said in the beginning, if you're talking, you are not listening. So sometimes we just have to stop talking so we can hear it. So here are some of the barriers, some of the barriers that we have to deal with when we're trying to become better listeners. And the first one is, is that sometimes we, we actually overvalue talking. You know, we think that if we talk, 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 then we are doing what we need to do. Actually, we need to stop talking, listen, ask questions, listen some more, stop talking, listen some more, talk, listen, 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 listen. Don't overvalue the talking process. You know, from a speaker standpoint, even a speaker can talk too much. We can say too many things when we need to be succinct in what we're saying. So don't overvalue that talking. Just remember that listening become uh, listening comes first in this process. Another thing, another barrier that we have is that we're just absolutely not focused on the person that we're talking to. We're focused on something that's going on around us or we're focused on ourselves. And you know, I do a lot of training in the personality types and uh, do you know if you're a certain personality, you have some traits that cause you not to be focused and not to listen. And so we need to think about our personality style when we're thinking about how we listen. And you got to think about what the other person's personality style might be to listen better. So focus, focus on the other person. Mental fatigue, physical fatigue can be a barrier to good listening. So if you know you're tired, that you've been in a meeting all day long and you've been listening, you've been in conversations all day long and you need to have a serious conversation with somebody, 
you might say, well, let me get back with you tomorrow or the next day. Let me rest so I can be fresh and focused on our conversation. Don't go into that conversation tired and not being able to enter, be energized in the process. And another one that gets in our way is that we often stereotype people and conversations. We already think we know what they're going to say. And so we make our minds up beforehand. So we start stereotyping the person. We start stereotyping the conversation and trying to say, okay, I know what they're going to say. I know how they're going to be. I know what they're going to be like. Don't do that. Don't do that. Another barrier is our own emotional baggage. This is not about you. This is about them. We need to be listening and focusing on them. We need to put ourselves on the back burner and not focus so much on our own personal baggage. Our own emotional baggage that we can allow to distract us and keep us from focusing on the other person and listening effectively. And the last thing I wanna share as barriers, and there are a lot more, this is just a handful that I'm sharing with you today, is that we are preoccupied with ourselves. It goes back to the previous one a little bit. We, we are focused on ourselves rather than focused on the individual that we're having the conversation with. So how can we develop better listening skills? Well, number one is make it a priority. Make it a priority to listen. You know, statistically, it's you know, in our day, they tell us that about 9% of our day is spent writing. Well, maybe for some of you, but for me, I would say writing is a little bit more of a percentage of my day. But statistically, for the average person, about 9% of our day is spent writing. About 16% of the day is spent reading. 30% of the day is spent talking or speaking. Now, I would say that my speaking is probably a little bit higher because that's what I do. But here's the real big one. The big one is, is that 45% of our day is spent listening, hearing. We need to make sure that we're using that part of our day in our listening so that we're getting the best out of what we're hearing. And it requires all of those things that we've talked about so far. The biggest one is being focused being focused on the conversation or the teaching or the message that we're receiving. If we're not focused, we'll drift out. Oh, look at the birds out there in the trees. Oh, is that Dale in the kitchen over there? It's easy to get distracted. But if you're going to spend 45% of your day listening, don't you want to make sure it's done in a way that you get the best results possible. So let's talk about that for a moment. So here's some suggestions that we can use to help us become better listeners. Let's look at the speaker, look them in the eye. You know, don't be going off over here and off over there and down here and up there and all that. Be focused. You know, and in this, in this virtual environment, you might think, well, I, people don't recognize that, but I can tell you, if I'm not looking at the camera, you know it. You know that I'm not looking at you. Now, I can't see you because I'm focused on the camera, but I would know if you were not looking at me, if I were sitting down looking at the monitor, I could see that, even in our virtual environment. Look at the speaker. Number two, let them speak. Don't interrupt. Allow them to say what they have to say. 
I, you know, I didn't watch the debate last night, but based on everything I heard, I, I, I guess it was kind of a debacle that they were talking over each other and nobody ever really said a message. It was just a lot of garbage and a lot of talking over each other and no message was ever really delivered. Now I wasn't watching, so I'm just giving you what I read. But don't interrupt. Let the other person have their say. This is, a, this, is, this is really going back to what I said about focus. Focus on trying to understand what the person is saying. Don't make assumptions. Listen for clarity. Make sure that you're hearing and understanding what is being said. It is so important that we listen. And I know, I know how hard it is. We all want to get our two cents worth in. But when we're doing that, we have no way of knowing what the other person is saying because we're not focused on them. We're focused on what am I going to say? What am I going to say? How am I going to say this? Stop. Listen. Understand what the other person is saying. Try to understand what their need is at that moment. What are their needs? Not what are your needs? You know, it goes back to the book that I read a few years ago by Bob Byrd uh, called uh, Giver's Gain. And it is so true. If we give of our time, if we give of our focus, we're going to get back what we give. Focus, give, think about them. Check your emotions at the door. You know, leave your emotions out of it. Go in with an open mindset. Try to take all of the emotion out of it, other than being joyful that you're there to hear and listen to what they have to say. It's important that you make them feel good about what they're saying. The next one, don't make judgment. You know, we are easy and quick to judge. If we're focused on them and we're listening to them to try to understand what they're saying, then we should have no judgment. We should be listening for clarity and purpose and understanding of what they have to say. If you're unclear, take a moment, summarize what you think they've said, and ask for clarity. That's seven and eight. Summarize, sum it up. This is what I heard you say. This is what I think you're saying. Is that right? If not, can you clarify that for me? And you can ask for clarity through asking good questions. Effective listening generates good questions in response to what's being said especially if you have unclear information. Think about it. The last one, always, always make listening a priority. Make listening a priority. I think those things that I just shared are so important. Now, I want you to think about listening and how that word is spelled. You can take those words and jumble them up and you can come up with another word out of listening. Can you guess what it is? It's very simple. If you take the word listen, if you take the word listen and you jumble up the letters, 
you can find the word silent in there. And to be good listeners, sometimes we simply have to be silent. So how are you applying these skills in your listening? Which one do you need to work on the most? I would love it if you would send me uh, a message in our, one of our messenger threads and tell me which one you need to work on the most and how you're going to do that. Because we all need to be better listeners. This world needs better listeners. If the world needs it, then our community needs it. If our community needs it, then our family needs it. And if our family needs it, then you and I need it as well. To be better listeners and to be listened to as well. So as we wrap up today's lesson, I want to ask you these questions, sort of a checklist of how we can improve our listening process. Do I usually look at the speaker while he or she is talking? Do I wait for the speaker to finish talking before I respond? Do I make understanding my goal? Am I usually sensitive to the speaker's immediate need? Do I make it a practice to check my emotions? Do I regularly suspend my judgment until I get the whole story? Am I in the practice of summing up what the speaker says during those major intervals so that I can get better understanding? Do I ask questions for clarity? Do I communicate to others that listening is a priority? Listening is so, so, so very important on this journey of becoming a person of influence. And I challenge each of you today to take time to focus on improving your listening skills. Whether you think you're already good at it or whether you're not so good at it. Here's the bottom line. We can all do better. Hey, I hope the message today added value to you. I love this lesson so much because it reminds me that I need to be a better listener. Hey, God bless. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday with another lesson from the John Maxwell's book, Becoming a Person of Influence. This is Jim saying so long.